Hello again and welcome to Larne. We're about half a mile down from Dylan Thomas's boathouse here. It's a glorious day, the sun's shining. We managed to scramble down the bank and we found a lovely little shady spot right next to the estuary where I plan to do a bit of carving. I'm making a start on this walking wood crafter sign for my carving room. It's um, going to be carved in cherry wood and it's going to have walking wood crafters in text here. It's going to have um, hiking boots, footprints walking up through here and Shappy's paw prints, our dog, walking up through here. As I've said in my previous videos, I've never had any formal training on wood carving. So everything I do is self-taught. The lettering is no different to this. Um, I've played around with different methods and this is the one I finally settled on. Again, there are several ways of um, setting out for doing lettering. Uh, this is my preferred method. So I mark out a centre line through here and another centre line, so I've got crosshairs. And then I get the piece of uh, paper that I'm going to trace on there and I do the same so I mark out cross hairs on that right in the centre of where, where it's going to be and then I use sellotape and stick that over the cross hairs and I know then that that's absolutely bang on in the middle and correct this way. If you were a tr true purist um, you'd be marking out the um, lines exactly where you want the letters, section them off and then hand drawing the letters in. Uh, life's too short for that, I've got way too many carvings that I want to do. Um, so I do this method, uh, printer, print it off and then um, pop me carbon paper underneath and then pencil over the top. You can um, use a laser printer and put the just print it off put it on top and then um, put heat on and then that leaves the ink on the boards i haven't got a laser printer um, another expense um, so this is the method that i use so we've got a standard um, inkjet printer and uh, yeah like i say i use the carbon paper underneath the reason i use the sellotape which is quite important is that um, it keeps it in exactly the same place so i can do it all and every time you can guarantee that one part of it doesn't come out uh, and, and then you can put it back on knowing that you're going to be in exactly the same place again as long as you keep it all level and then you can draw it in again and, and, and you get it so I do that first and once I've got that in uh, I've got a pretty good idea where it is and then I go over with a pencil and sometimes a ruler depending on how bad it's come out and then um, draw it in over the top so I'll make a start on that. super important that you make the knife or keep the knife as sharp as you possibly can otherwise you end up with floppy bits in the channels that you're uh, carving out and it looks awful so the sharper you can get it the better right, here we go then so i'm gonna make a start now uh, using me uh trusty old two cherries knife um what i do is start off with um th this piece here is called the serif 
Um, so I start that and that gives me then a stop cut and then I put a stop cut in the bottom here and then I'll do the um, the actual lines. Let's make a start with that. So It's really important here as well that you go in shallow then in deep and then come back out shallow again. You'll see why in a minute. And then I flip that round. And then I put that stop cut in there. Trying to get the best angle on here. Right. As I said the other day with something I was doing, the best thing to do is to look a few mil in front of the blade. If you're looking at the blade, you'll end up with the blade wandering off. So I'm going to go across that again, gently, just to make sure that it's got the full cut. I'm going to flip that around again. Let me go in. Right, so I'm going to go that far because I haven't put this one in yet. There's no stop cut at the bottom, so stop in here. So, what I'll do is I'll put this serif in now. So, I put the blade right in the bottom of the channel on that angle. And then I twist around and up. And then that one flicks out and you end up with that lovely curve coming out. And then I'm going to flip that around. And then in the bottom of the channel, around and up. And that gives you that. I'll just put a little stop cut in there, so it's going to be a tiny, tiny one in there. And then I'm going to flip around again. That's going to be reasonably deep then, but then it's got to come back up shallow again because that's quite a narrow one. This one. Let me come in there. And then flip around again. And hopefully all that should fall out then. He says. Not quite get down deep enough there. Okay. And then you just tidy it up. I'm really happy with that bit there. So you can flick that out. There we go. Stop cut in there. Put another stop cut in the bottom there. I would usually do this on a on a um, on my workbench, so it's a bit easier to hold rather than balancing on your knee. But so I definitely advise that. <laughs> right, Let's 
serif in there. So in shallow, then deep, out shallow. got the tide going out here and all those birds are down right on the water line jostling for the position for their dinner I think it's the noisiest birds I think I've ever heard Double check that serif's cut properly because that didn't seem to come out very well then. I can see why I haven't gone right to the end, so that's fine. Uh, 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 uh. So then nice and deep in the channel, around and up. Nice and deep in the channel, around and up. I've tried um, several different types of wood for carving letters and um, I've done some house signs which are obviously bigger letters and you can get away with oak but I've, what I find is if you go this small then um, to get the detail you need some sort of harder denser wood um, this is cherry um, I've used hazel before I've used sycamore that, that carves quite nicely. So any of the um, harder, more denser woods work well with the smaller letters. But I have got another house sign to do um, in uh, in uh, bigger letters, so I'm gonna go for oak with that. So that should be fine.
that's a sharp bend. You notice I'm moving the board as much as I'm moving the knife. That helps you to get around some of these really tight bends. I'm also drawing the knife out when you're trying to go around the sharp. There we go. I'm on the last letter now, on the S. I think what we'll do, Shappy's been a really good boy, as always, but it is quite hot today, so I think what we'll do is we'll finish this video off in a part two, and I will um, put the footprints in, the paw prints, and uh, we'll retreat now into Larne and have a little look round Larn and we'll call that a day. So what I'll do now um, is I'll just finish this off by um, going over again um, anywhere I've cut in a little bit deep or onto slant I'll just tidy that up and some of these let's find one there um, they're really really tight bits here are a bit much for even for the sharp, sharpness of this knife so I've got some small gouges at home so what I'll do is I'll tidy those ones up on there so this will be all tidied up um, when we do part two and as I said, we'll be putting in some footprints and some paw prints. But off to Larn now.